Yeah. I want a promotion. Yeah. <laughs> Suggestive. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of iScience Coffee and Chat. Today, I have with me Dr. Ainara Aguadero, who is a material scientist here at Imperial College. And um, so, Ainara, thank you so much for coming in today. And um, please tell me a little bit about material science. So, first of all, what is, what exactly is material science? Um, I will say that material science is the study of all the things that uh, we have around us. No, like mm -hmm. it can be almost anything. Yeah. Uh, we use materials for all the devices that we use in our day to day lives, and and so what, what we try to do is to understand how they, they work and to try to improve their properties. So to try to to make a bit our, our lives better yeah. in some way. Wow. So it can be very broad. Yeah. Is is yeah. It's a huge it's a huge field. Yeah. So what is your focus in, in material science? So uh, my focus is mainly on solid state ionics, so ceramics, mm -hmm. and crystalline materials. Mm -hmm. um, and I, yeah, it's a very interesting area, yes, because you can play with a lot of things. You can play with uh, crystal structures, yeah. uh, defects in crystal structures, yeah. compositions, um, morphology. And, and with that, you can really vary a lot the properties of the materials and yeah. what you can get from them. Yeah, and, and so um, the you're working with material and, and crystalline structures. So please describe the, the <laughs> crystalline structure that you might be working with. So this is a crystalline structure. And well, what makes them uh, very interesting is that um, you can create in the crystal the defects that you need uh, for the material to have a particular property. Okay. So you, you can play with different crystal structures and different compositions and create defects, for instance. So um, if you were looking for a material that is an ionic conductor, uh, you could uh, take this uh, crystal structure and say, okay, do, what do I need to, to make the ions move in okay, this, in this yeah. material? And so you will look at it and say, well, at the moment, I actually, the, all the positions in the material are completely fixed yeah. and they won't be able to move. So okay. th this one, where, where, where can this go if this is filled with another one? Yeah. So what we do, for instance, is to create vacancies. Yeah. So we, we dope the material, mm -hmm. so we create uh, a vacancy here, so this can jump here and this can jump here, and then oh, everybody okay. starts to move. Yeah. Or you can also create interstitial positions and open new ways for the, for the ions to move. Oh, wow, uh, okay. Kind of things. So, so for example, you might replace one of these um, with with one of your dopants, I guess. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So they are. What you do is to play with the electron neutrality of the material. Okay. So because you always have to to uh, have a charge balance in your material. Okay. Uh, if if I uh, change this particular element by another element with a different oxidation state, mm -hmm. the material has to to reorganize itself. Okay. To balance that uh, charge. Okay. Change yeah. and so it, it can if it's an oxide, it can do it uh, creating oxygen vacancies or oxygen interstitials, for instance. Okay. So getting reduced or oxidized. Okay, and so um, the interstitials are the sort of spaces between between each of these atoms. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, wha whereas vacancies are in particular crystallographic positions, interstitials are new positions in the crystal structure. So they are not uh, original crystallographic okay. positions, but yeah. you, you create them. And depending on the crystal structure, you're allowed to do that or not. Okay. So it's not always possible to do that. Yeah. And, and so um, what kind of uh, work would you do with, with the properties that these special materials have? So what uh, our main research nowadays is focus on energy. Yeah. Uh, so we try to uh, design materials with particular properties so we can use them for different applications in energy. Yeah. And so, for instance, uh, ionic conductivity mm -hmm. is what you need uh, for an electrolyte in a fuel cell or okay. in a battery. Oh, mm. wow, okay. And, and would this I increase the, is it the efficiency of, of energy uh, fuel cells or is it for? Yeah, it, yeah, well, we try, we try to make the, des the devices work better so we can have a cleaner energy. Okay. Uh, or also increase safety. Uh, for instance, in batteries, you yeah. usually have liquid electrolytes that are flammable. So we try to work with materials that are a bit safer, so we can actually use them uh, more. Yeah, it's highly specialized materials yeah. that you make. Um, can they are they only used in your specialized field, or are they applicable in in other fields? 
So yeah, that, that is one of the most interesting things that uh, because we do a study uh, the materials from a very fundamental point of view and we play with the properties we can get from them, then you can use the materials for different applications. So for instance, we use um, uh, lithium condu conductor materials uh, as electrolytes for batteries, but that can also be used uh, for lithium bands for bipolar disorder. Wow. And things like that. So yeah. it's very, it's very interesting. It's really broad uh, field, mm. I guess, and many, many applications. Well, thank you so much for coming in again. Thank you uh, to chat to us about material science, yes. and thank you so much for tuning in. Um, don't forget to follow us on Twitter and uh, subscribe to our YouTube. The links will be in the description below, and um, tune in next time. See you. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> nice one.